And joining me now is the ESPN Sports Science greatest athlete of all time, Mr. Bo Jackson. Bo, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you feel is the one trait that really separated you from everyone else? As a kid, I got more butt whoopings, which honed that speed, <laughs> which honed the strength in my mindset. I was the toughest SOB on the field. It didn't matter what it was. It could be track, baseball. I was the toughest, and I wasn't going to let that guy get the best of me. In terms of the thing that separated you out, you feel that it was your mind more than your body? Always. What was it saying? A temperamental athlete is 95% temper and 5% athlete. People ask me, what is the thing that you fear most? It's failure. So I refuse to let failure get the best of me. When you were growing up, at what age did you feel, wow, I'm really better than everyone else? I never felt that way. But as a kid, I grew up with a bad speech impediment. Stuttered like you cannot believe. And so I, I was always that kid that hung out in the back and wouldn't say anything because I didn't want other people to laugh or make fun of me. So whenever I competed in any sports, it was always with my brothers and my cousins, family members that wouldn't make fun of me. And they were always older. So I would always play football with them, baseball with them. So when I got to the point to where I competed with kids my own age, the parents would be in the stands, like, get that man off the field with our kids. Because I'm running up and down the field on them. And I heard that a lot in high school. Were there any sports that you just found you were better at than others, or were you just great at everything? Well, my love was in track. My high school track coach, he said, how would you like to go compete in the decathlon? And I'm like, what's the decathlon? He said, it's a track event. It lasts two days, and it's 10 events. And he told me the events. And as he was saying the events, I said, yes, I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I'm good at that. And I suck at that. And sucking at that was the mile. <laughs> now, that first decathlon you participated first decathlon. in, was that the first time first you time did ever, all those events? Yes, first time in my life. Two weeks prior to that, I didn't know what a decathlon was. So you didn't have hours of practice of no. throwing the shot put? No, I borrowed a kid's pole, and I pole vaulted 13 feet. <laughs> first time? <laughs> first time out. <laughs> and I placed 10th out of about almost 200 kids. I placed 10th in the ninth grade. And you were the youngest kid there. Uh, yes. In the 10th grade, I was runner-up, and I ran the mile again, and it damn near killed me. After that mile, I told the coach, I said, I'll make a deal with you. He said, what's the deal? I said, next year, I promise you, I will win the decathlon. If I build enough points between myself, first place, and second place, do I have to run the mile? And he laughed. He said, coming up to the mile, if you have at least 1,500 point lead over second place, you don't have to run the mile. <sighs> sucker. <laughs> I said, sucker. And what happened? And I think I ended up with almost 1,700 points. <laughs> and I sit up in the stands and I watch those guys battle it out for second place. You didn't run the mile? My junior and my senior year, I didn't run the mile. But you still won the decathlon? I still won the decathlon. <laughs> <laughs> I did not run the mile. So do you think I could beat you right now if you and I were to just run you the mile? You can actually beat me in the half a mile by a quarter of a mile. <laughs> wow. I am passionate about hating the mile. So you just stick with me for 300 yards, then it's like a Porsche against a tricycle. You're, you're, you're gone. It's, it's just, I just, just, I just give up. Coming out of high school, you were actually drafted by the Yankees. But you decided to go to Auburn to play football. What was that choice like? It really wasn't hard. Um, I'm the eighth of 10 kids, and I was the first to go to a major college. I felt in my mind that, not from an arrogant standpoint or a conceited way, but I knew that I had the rest of my life to make money. I only had one chance to go to college to set an example for my family members that are coming along after me. And that was more important to me. When you moved into the NCAA and onto the professional level, mm -hmm. was there anything that you did in your training that helped to separate you from everyone else? Lifting weights was out of the question. 
And people always said, how is it that you maintain your size? Even in college, we'd have mandatory weight day. The only thing that I would do is go down and strengthen my neck. I'd get a 45 pound weight and lay off the edge of the bench and just sit the weight, let the hole in the weight center my forehead and just do neck. But that's all I did. I never lifted weights, never did, because it made me too bulky and I couldn't run. And uh, the coaches knew that. Go work on your neck and, and you're fine. Did you pay attention to the science of sport at all, or was it just pure feel for you? It was just a natural feel for me. From everything, running, throwing, climbing, just it was just a natural feel for me. Because when I was a kid, we didn't have all this stuff that kids have now, to where they could train and do all this, and the computers and all this stuff. We never had that. Our parents said, hey, get up, eat breakfast, go outside, don't come back in the house until it's time to take a bath and go to bed. So we had to make our own fun. We'd have crab apple battles to where it's six or seven kids against me. And I would win. Kids would get tired of throwing crab apples and they'd run home. I'd chase them home. They'd run in the house and close the screen door, apple through the screen door. One of the commonalities of all the great athletes is that money, success, fame didn't change them. How are you able to keep in check your humility and your desire to get better while you are clearly better than everybody else. I think this is a strong trait that I inherited from my mother. Uh, my mother worked two jobs to support 10 kids at one time or another. And uh, my mom always told me, when you get to the point to where you think that you're better than the next guy, that's gonna be the beginning of your downfall. Well, Bo, congratulations, and thank you for just being Bo. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.